Brian, there's there's certainly a mindset that would be out there. I'm sure some fans would have this. That if you have you know a young rebuilding team that's uh, you know added a lot of draft picks, that if you have an older player and a younger player who are about even, in this case talking about quarterback, a case could be made to go with the younger guy to invest in the future. As it pertains to quarterback with your team, do you agree with that mentality? If two guys are close, you go with the younger guy with where you are as a franchise now. That case could be made. A case, a, case, a case could a case could be made that you know playing the older guy and uh, a case could be also be made that the younger guy's not ready. You know I think I think a lot of times you know, and I, I I understand that that thought process, but you know I'm the one dealing with the individual player and sometimes guys just aren't ready and um, you know the whole sink or swim mentality. Uh, you know, it's easy for somebody on the outside to say, but you know, for that individual player and the and the, and the, the best interest of that individual person, uh, you know, that might not be the case. Um, and for those who aren't, you know, in the trenches and <laughs> dealing with the day to day, they wouldn't understand that. So, if a guy's ready, we put him out there. Um, if he's not, we won't put him out there. And I think that's the right way to approach it. As it relates to Rosen and the quarterback position, if in fact. The scenario is wait and learn. Okay, from your experience, what are some of the things that quarterbacks, not on the field, but watching, learning, listening from a veteran, how it can benefit them? I would say there's a long list of guys who have have gone through that process. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is a guy that comes to mind. Uh, Brady's a guy that comes to mind. Uh, Steve Young. Rogers, uh, is a lot. Is a you know, is a pretty good, pretty good list. I'm not even naming them all. Uh, I think uh, sitting uh, for some, in some instances, not all, uh, in some instances, is, is is could be a good thing. Uh, sitting, learning, uh, improving your technique, improving your fundamentals, uh, going through the mental reps of games, practices. I think. Uh, I think guys have gotten better that way. Um, I think there, there's a, a hunger to play by sitting. Uh, and uh, I think guys understand that there's, it's, it's a privilege to be in this league and a privilege to play. And I think they, um, they take advantage of when they get an opportunity, they, take, they, they, take, uh, they understand how important that it is and they, they, they take full advantage of it. Sometimes we've seen young quarterbacks thrown in there. Maybe they get sacked a ton or they just don't have success. And you kind of wonder about their confidence level. Does that at all factor in kind of wrecking a young quarterback's confidence? I think all of it factors in. Uh, hopefully, you know, you, when you stick a guy in there, uh, look, bad, bad plays happen. So uh, we've got to stay even. We can't get too high, can't get too low. Uh, and. You know when the when the bad plays happen, if they happen, uh, you know I think if you you've got a guy in there, that's not what you're, you're worried about. You're not worried about wrecking his confidence because if that's the case, you shouldn't put him in there in the first place. Um, but you, you you want you know your players at all positions, good play, bad play, move on to the next play, um, and that's part of uh, dealing with the highs and lows of playing in this league. Um, and there's a. a a, a discipline, a consistency that you need at all positions. And uh, again, guys who get too low, guys who, if you feel like you, their confidence is going to be wrecked, and um, you know, they shouldn't be out there. Could it, could it come down to whoever plays better Thursday will get the starting job? Is it that simple? Mm, I wouldn't say that. I'd say that there's a there's been a, obviously a lot of practice reps, practice game reps. Uh, from the spring to the training camp to games to our practices last week with Tampa, you know, for it to come down to one one game, I don't no, I don't think it's that. Uh, I think as a staff, we've talked about um, this position as well as every other position on this team uh, a, uh, a lot. I spent a lot of time on it, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll make the decision we feel is best for for this team, this organization. Brian, how much does confidence from their teammates, um, does that factor into you picking the starting quarterback? And 
guys on both sides of the ball? It factors in a little bit, but you know the confidence that I have and our coaching staff has, uh, I would say plays a, a, a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more we put into that. Uh, I think we, you know, we'll make those decisions. And um, but yeah, you want you want all your players to have confidence and everyone who steps on the field. So uh, we'll make those decisions as a staff. Uh, you know, and the input will be primarily, you know, from our staff, uh, Chris, Brandon, and the personnel staff. And uh, again, like always, we'll do what we think feels best for the team. Brian, what, what have you seen this summer from Kalen Bellage? And how unusual in your travels is it to have a guy that big who's that fast? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's unusual. Um, he's a uh, very, very talented young man, works hard. Uh, football's very important to him. Um, yeah, and he's a he's a he's a he's a big man. He's a fast, and he's fast, and he's athletic, and he can catch the ball, and uh, and he's uh, he's doing a lot of good things for us. So we're excited uh, to see him perform, you know, this week and, and moving forward. And uh, you know, hopefully we, we we get the best out of Kalen. I think we will. There's a lot. Really? Yeah. That's you got. You got 15. Go ahead. Yeah, you, a lot. Six or seven. Okay. Got it. I'm just. Yeah, I'm just asking. Like a lot of other teams. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just. You know. I'm asking. I don't know. I, I think uh, I, I would say we saw one last week in Mike Evans. Uh, big, strong, fast. The benefits of having a guy like that are, you know, defensively, that's the guy you don't want to, to wreck the game. So you make sure that that doesn't happen. Offensively, that's the guy you get the ball to as, ma as many ways, as, many, as much as possible. Um, you know? Thankfully, there's not a league full of Mike Evans. Evans is. I mean, there's obviously quite a few really good receivers, um, uh, and you know they they're they're a problem. Um, they're they're a real problem. Uh, so defensively, you know how we handle those those players. Uh, you know we have got a game plan for them. Offensively, a game plan to get them the ball. And uh, I think we've got some good receivers as well. Uh, guys, we're going to game plan for, and you know the teams want to. Uh, match us up one on one and you know we'll try to take advantage of them and uh, hopefully we get to a point where guys are the people are doubling our guys too I think um, we've got a few a couple guys who who have that capability and just need to uh, raise their level of play and get to that point Brian, what are, as a former defensive coordinator or play caller what is your views on cut blocking and, and the approach that it has to like impact I think it's something you have to practice um, Defensively, I mean, cut, again, cut blocks are part of the game. Uh, specifically on the defensive line, you get cut, you know, on the backside. There's going to be gaping holes in the, in the defense, so you, you have to not allow that to happen. Uh, you know, in space, it's something we practice. Uh, not getting cut, um, sprawling, staying on your feet. Uh, again, offensively, I mean, really, you're taking a shot when you cut. You know, if you miss, then the guy's going to go make a play. Uh, if you make the block, then um, then you're going to spring the running back or receiver or tight end. Uh, so, I mean, as a as a you know defensive guy, I think it's it's something we have to practice. It's something uh, you know we have to uh, not allow ourselves to get cut. And, you know, it's a part of the game that, that it's always been a part of the game, and it'll continue to be that way. And we have to defend against it. I think it's film study. I think you see it over and over and over again, and you know, we, we have a pretty good idea when it's going to happen. Uh, I would say in space, it's a little bit, you know, one of those things where you're not necessarily sure. And uh, you know, the good space cut guys, you know, they'll, it'll look like you know they're, they're going to block you up top, and then next thing you know, you're on the ground. Um, and we know who those players are as well. But I think a lot of it's film study. 
Um, some guys are just, you know, they, they, they run at you with their head down, so you know it's coming. Uh, so I think it's something that we study as a, as a team. We know which particular players are cut, cut blockers. You know, a lot of tight ends are, you know, flashing across the line of scrimmage to go block a big defensive end. Those, a lot of times those end up being cut blocks. So it's something we try to uh, give our players that information uh, pregame. Right. A lot of times you hear uh, coaches and players saying you've got to buy in, you've got to believe. How do you know when a player has bought in to your system? I think when they they come out and they practice on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of weather, you know, rain, heat, uh, bumps and bruises, that's part of the game. You know, when guys are really trying to work hard to communicate, uh, when it's when it's hot and it's, you know it's – it's tough. Those guys are bringing energy to practice. Uh, I think that's when you know. Um, I think we're starting to get a little bit of that around here, and hopefully we get more. It, does it have anything to do with unfield stuff, doing stuff the way that they're taught, or being separate? I think it's 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 all encompassing. It's you know doing the fundamentals the way we ask, uh, practicing with an enthusiasm and an energy, and uh, and guys who just have fun playing the game. Um, I think at the end of the day. You, it's hard. We work them hard. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we try to create an environment where it's not easy. Uh, if you can make this fun, uh, I think that's that's what we're looking for. Can you talk a little bit about um, Duval um, and him adjusting to a new role in the past couple of weeks? Uh, he's doing, I think he's one of the hardest working guys on his team. He's one of the strongest guys on his team, that's for sure. Uh, so he's playing a little bit of O-line and D-line. Uh, I wanted to see he had a, some some good snaps last week in Tampa. Uh, he's a young, uh, tough, physical uh, young man. He needs a lot of work with his fundamentals and techniques. That's what we're working on on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, you know we're we're excited to to work with him. You know this year. Brian, I wanted to ask you about Jason Sanders, uh, how he's looking in your eyes, and, as well as the fact that you didn't bring in another kicker, which I think in and of itself makes a statement mm -hmm. for him. So how, how's he doing? I think he's doing well. Um, I think he's somebody, uh, you know, he's, he's giving us the kickoffs we're looking for. Um, from a field goal standpoint, he's got, obviously he's got a big leg and he's been accurate thus far. Uh, and that's, you know, even when he misses, he comes right back and you know, normally he makes. I mean, I think he's he kind of embodies a lot of the uh, never get too high, never get too low, stay even qualities that we're looking for, and you need that out of your uh, your place kicker. Um, he's done a really good job, um, and he hopefully we just we 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 stay on that on, on the stay. He stays on the course that he's been on. Brian, what kind of progress did you see from Nick Needham from game one to game two? I think Nick uh, has improved from game one to game two. Um, a couple plays there that we weren't so happy about, um, but again, I think every game's an experience, sp uh, specifically for these rookies. <laughs> they get out there. Sometimes it's the first time they've seen a bunch or a stack or a, you know, in this defense at least, um, and what to do in those situations. Uh, it's, it, it's you know when they get it right, it's good, and we can you know reinforce you know the communication and why why we do it when they when they don't. Uh, we can reinforce, you know, why the communication or whatever the technique or the fundamental, why it's so important. So, again, like every other rookie, every every play is an experience, and it's a good experience for them. And not just rookie, but any player. Um, you know, uh, the game's evolving so much. There's there's always something new, whether it's a, you know, a jet sweep or a shovel or you know, or unbalanced formation or whatever it might be. Um, you know, all those. Uh, all those uh, variables and adjustments and things that are different, you know, it's, it's always good for you know young guys and really old, a anyone to see. Brian, what is a couple it more questions, guys. Jamal Wilkes and Eric Rowe, <coughs> experience with them in New England. What is it about those two guys that made you want to have them here in the secondary? I think they're both tough and smart. Um, I think they both play disciplined football. I think they both. Uh, I think they work hard and they tackle and. Uh, you know, they can, and they both, you know, they're, they're pretty good cover guys. So, um, again, I think they're they're versatile. You know, they can play multiple positions, and and uh, 
and again, they have familiarity with what we, how we, how we do things, and that's, you know, I think that's helped some of the other guys. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I think we've got a few guys here. I mean, the, I think we got a good receiver group. You know, I think we, we need to play better at, at some, with some of these guys. I mean, I think Preston's come on. You guys have seen that. You know, Devontae's, you know, had, you know, some good practices. And we just need more consistency. Um, Kenny, obviously, he's had some, you know, production in the past. We need to, you know, get more production from him. And, uh, you know, just continue to build at, at, at that at that uh, position. Albert, obviously. So I think we got a good group. When you were in New England, was Parker the guy that you had to pay the most attention to facing the Dolphins just because of his unique size, of, unique combination of size and speed? Yeah, when uh, when he was out there, I mean, there was a couple games where he didn't play against us. So, um, But, yeah, he's obviously got a combination of size, speed, athleticism, can go up and get the ball. Uh, you got to be aware of where he is, and uh, he's a good player.